six days of moose jerky. I'm looking forward to Tommy's cooking. I'm looking forward to Gloria's heartfelt welcome. Be nice to put your feet up. Don't get too comfortable. As soon as we get back, we gotta get started on that hay shed. This is where you say thank you, partner. Oh, yeah? Why would I do a thing like that? Just before we left, I made a deal with Nelson to build that hay shed. Really? What do we have to trade for? The gray gelding. The hard-working, sure-footed gray, or the sway-back, half-blind gray? Now, Rich, I am offended. What do you take me for? Nelson's our friend. Which is why I assured him we'd pitch in as soon as we got back. Of course, I had not anticipated you wanting to ride all the way to the Charlies. Wait a minute. Swinging by there was your right. But since that took us two days out of our way, Nelson should be just about finished by now. That doesn't look like any hay shed I've ever seen. Now, either that is a Martian spaceship and the War of the Worlds has begun, in which case I wouldn't hold your wife wholly responsible, or it's a water tower, and those little green men I see are the Georges. In which case, there's gonna be hell to pay. Richmond P. Hobson Jr., Panhandle Phillips, and Gloria McIntosh Hobson were real people. And for a short period of time, in the wilderness halfway between Vancouver and the Yukon, they worked to carve out the largest cattle ranch in the world. That part is true. to have what we've got. He's right, Robert. You don't know what you're missing. Rich! And there's the best part about marriage. Daily intercourse. Talking between husbands and wives. Are you out of your mind? I wanted to surprise you. Oh, well, you did that all right. We talked about building a water tower someday. Someday. Pam hired Nelson to build a hay shed because we need it for hay season. We'll get done. The tower's almost finished. Now, that's not the point. Oh, think of it, Rich. No more walking to the creek at 5.30 in the morning to haul water. Bubble baths for two. Still not the point. Did you get the cock? It's right here. I've got to seal the water tower. And when I lay my head on my pillow, I think of my lonesome cowboy. Hey, wanna go shoot some gophers? Tommy, you've read that thing so many times, I'm surprised your eyeballs haven't worn all the ink off of it. I know it's hard for you to understand, but... Me and Sally share, kid. Seeing as you've never experienced a true bonding of hearts and souls. Least I'm not a lug nut. Who are you calling a lug nut? How many letters have you written to her, Tommy? Three or four. I counted eight, for sure. Well, it's possible. And, and how many has she written you? You know what the mail's like out here. One. And it's a month old. So she's not the greatest pen pal. Face it, Tommy. She's lost interest. That's not true. Now, Sally looked at me and she saw a cowboy. 
worthy of her affections. Well, you better hope that she doesn't get a closer look. Saying you're a cowboy doesn't make it true. Short of a rear view of Rupert Mowat, that thing is the biggest eyesore I ever saw. Did you talk to your wife? Uh-huh. Did you set her straight? In my own way. Nelson and McDaniels are starting the hay shed as we speak? Not exactly. I knew I could count on you. Just stay out of it, man. Nelson, you turncoat. Good day, Panhandle. What made you stoop to such treachery? Number one, I saw the mare you tried to pawn off on me. Was there a number two? Gloria paid cash. So what if I did? I'm the bookkeeper. We can afford it. That's not the point. You've set a dangerous precedent. Now Nelson will always want cash. So? So, bartering is a time-honored tradition in these parts. And you always give people a rotten deal. Now you've got to wreck that, too. Gloria, you can't go making important decisions like this on your own. You and Pan make big decisions like this all the time. That's not true. We always let you have your say. Absolutely. Then we go ahead and do what needs to be done. Would you look at the time? Rich? In case you've forgotten, women got the vote in 1919. But there was no vote. You just went ahead and did it. The world's greatest cordon bleu chefs or men. Brings you out this way, Reverend. Oh, we're on our way to the Georges. I'm here to bury old Nelson. I thought you people stopped burying heretics alive some time ago. Um, old Nelson isn't dead. Uh, but the message said. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. You were looking for old Nelson Charlie. Yeah, we stopped by a couple of days ago to pay our respects. Well, uh, how much further is there a place from here? Six more hours in the saddle. We'll never make it before nightfall. You know what? Stay here tonight. We can ride out in the morning. Well, uh, we're much obliged. Thank you. Yeah. Aren't you forgetting something? What? You got a fugitive on the property. Oh. All right, uh, I'll go find McDaniels. Tell him to lie low for a day. Excuse me. But is there a cowboy here by the name of Tommy Akins? Yes, ma'am. Right this way. Hey, Mr. Gordon Blue. You've got company. <laughs> Sully. <clears throat> Sully. Sully. <laughs> you travel often with your father? No, this is my first time. You see, I've discovered my passion in life. Wildflowers. I'm determined to find some bleeding hearts to add to my collection. The Reverend's sleeping in the barn. Better get the homebrew out of there. No, you're right. Man's an Anglican. Might drink it all. Uh, you warn McDaniels? I couldn't find him. I'll keep looking. <laughs> ah, I don't believe we've met uh, Reverend Prentice. I'm Esther. Robert McDaniels. Well, well, it's always nice to meet new faces. Whew. It's fate. He doesn't know who you are. You can ask him to marry you and Esther. He doesn't know who you are. You can ask him to marry you and Esther. 
Nelson, let Robert decide in his own time. I have no desire to rush, Esther. But you'll never be able to tie the knot in time. You'd be arrested. There's no time like the present, Robert. What are you waiting for? Good things come to those who wait. Don't rush into anything. We couldn't even wait 24 hours before we got married. Some would say that was foolhardy. Who would say that? <laughs> it's good for the goose isn't always good for the gander. That's what I'm saying. Everyone's different. Yes, they are. And Robert and Esther may never have another chance. Carpe diem, Robert. Seize the day. Marry in haste, repent in leisure. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Me? I like the flower one. Dear Ed, how are you? I'm fine. And Tommy is as cuckoo as ever. You were right. Sally can't stand the sight of me. Is that what you think? It's what I know. I guess you're right. She rode two days on horseback, just to find bleeding hearts which grow by the bazillions in Vanderhoof. books on wildflowers. Well, I... Uh, nope. But uh, I do know lots about bleeding hearts. You do? <laughs> well, uh, one in particular. Gosh. I'm beat. Good night then, kid. So you and Kip sleep out here, just the two of you? It's Kit! With a T! It's in Toodaloo! Yeah, but, uh... Well, Kit's not really a girl. I mean, she's a girl, but, but she isn't. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. So, uh, I can't believe that you just got here and you have to leave in the morning. I know. It stinks. I won't even get to see you do all that roping and riding you wrote me about. Ugh. I'll just keep picturing you with a paring knife. Which is a shame, really. <laughs> because I'm, uh, I'm only on kitchen duty once a month. Yeah, um, normally I'm out there burning cattle, riding range, that sort of thing. I'm, uh, really what it's like to behold. It's a pity that you won't see me in action. Love is not love, which alters when alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. What do you think? A little late for Shakespeare, isn't it? It's never too late for Shakespeare. Are you going to be reading much longer? Or, or do you prefer... It is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark. What do we need a poem for at this hour? As part of the toast. Toast? After the dinner? What dinner? The wedding dinner. Before you start engraving invitations, shouldn't you let McDaniels actually propose? He will. Oh, he will, will he? He's crazy about her. Anybody can see that. Gloria, he's a wanted man. He's got more important things on his mind. Oh? 
something more important than the love of his life? What would that be? Nothing. Nothing at all. Exactly. He's probably proposing to Esther right now. or maybe a rat let's have a look no you can't why not because it bit me on my derriere oh. don't worry daddy i won't let you down i'll join you if i have to force myself into the saddle oh, don't be foolish sally you should stay here and rest Just follow the trail due north. You can't miss the place. I'll be back by nightfall. I'll thank you to keep an eye on my daughter. I do, Reverend. You gotta help me. Sally fell for a cowboy, not a cook. <laughs> you should have thought of that before you told her a pack of lies. Okay, I stretched the truth, which is why I need your help. <laughs> I'm not a miracle worker. You want a kiss? I, uh, helped you with Choco. I, uh, I realized he spurned you, but that was hardly my fault. And, and clearly the fellow was a fool. In fact, I wonder if he wasn't a few peaches short of a cobbler. When I, I thought that we were friends. We are. You know, you were a, a great cowboy. One of the best. I know you can help me pull this off. Nah. Please. You ever get water running from that thing, you should use it to hose down Tommy. We'll get the water running? Sure. Once the rain fills it up, which, seeing as how this is the dry season, should be in about three months. Unless it freezes first. McDaniel! He's gone! My darling Esther. Meeting you was the best thing that ever happened to me. But all the talk last night... ...made me see that we can never marry. If the Reverend doesn't bring the law down on me, someone else will. I'll always be a fugitive. It would be no life for you. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Yours forever, Robert. What? Ride back to our place in case Robert went there to pick up his things. I was this close to having a man in the family who wasn't blind or one-legged. This close. Poor Esther. Poor McDaniels. Nelson. I wouldn't want to be on the bad side of Rita. It wasn't Nelson's fault. Of course not. It was your fault. I beg your pardon? Well, Esther and McDaniels were perfectly happy until you started pushing them. All this talk of till death do us part. I didn't say that. Doesn't matter. That's what men hear. Excuse me while I ask Rita if there's room for two in Nelson's doghouse. Shut up. Maybe we should look for some of those, uh, bleeding hearts instead. What do you think you're doing? We are going to separate the herd. We are? Well, the three of you stick together. Understand? Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Hobson. Good. Separating the herd? I read all about this insane gray novel. Oh, this is just peachy. I forgot my sun hat. <laughs> Quick, you whacked me in the foot with a blunt type jack so I can say that I, I sprained my ankle. Easy! Right? I got it worked out. Right? I got it worked out. 
You'll cut the calf from its mom. It looks real good. But the horse does all the work. In Zane Gray, the cowboy just rides in and rides out with the calf in one seamless motion. That's why it's called fiction. Come on, Duke. Ugh, what's that smell? It's my perfume. Here, try some. No! No. arms and legs flapping around like that. Uh, a true cowboy is completely relaxed in the saddle. Whoa! I've been thinking. Always a bad sign. Pan's right. It would take months to fill the water tower if we waited for rain. Which is why we have to fill it by hand. We? We'll haul water from the creek. If we all pitch in, it should be done by nightfall. More like next year. <laughs> Can't take that long. Small buckets, big tower. I'm sure you can do the arithmetic. Sooner you get started. Oh, we would love nothing more than to get started, but unfortunately, we have a prior commitment. We do? Mm. McDaniels is out there all by himself. And Esther's crying into her beadwork, so the only honorable thing to do is, is to find him and bring him back. I thought you said he shouldn't marry Esther. Oh, on the contrary. It's obvious he's crazy about her. Well, so suggesting that they marry was pushing, but dragging him back is okay? No one's gonna do any dragging. We'll get him to volunteer. So let Pan go. Well, it's a matter of expertise. Uh, I'll do the tracking, and then once we find him, Rich will do the talking. Tracking and talking. It's a two-man job. I'll discuss things with him man to man. Surely you will agree that we should do something to help, especially since you are to blame. I'll go catch up the horses. And when McDaniels does come back, we'll get him started on that hay shed, which is the job he was supposed to do in the first place. <laughs> well, then. I suppose you should be on your way. I suppose I should. stuff to make it out here, but you know, she's really come into her own. Yep. Gloria's running the ranch so well now, she's got no need of a couple of cowboys hanging around, muddying up her clean floors. I mean, you and I could be out riding the range for weeks at a time. Suits me just fine. Given your present attitude toward matrimony, are you really going to convince McDaniels to come back? Nope. I'll let him convince himself to come back. No. I can see my part of this job is done. Quite a coincidence. Ah, we're just looking for strays. What about you? Sound of a moose. Scat to your left. The tracks. Well, now, by the looks of it, I'd say that's a bull. No, it's a full-grown female. All I asked was for one day of his help on this. One lousy day. The trick is to get them to do what you want without letting them know you've done it. Reed is very good at that. Men are like children. They have no sense of responsibility. Not all men. Robert never shirks. 
Aside from riding off in the middle of the night, leaving you nothing but a note. Thanks for that, sir. I'm going to get tough. The men go hunting. You see Esther before you headed out? Mm hmm? Esther. Oh, yeah. How was she? Oh, you know, crying. She'll get over it. What about the shh? You'll scare the most. Weren't you just the teeniest bit scared? Nah. But, uh, you gotta keep your wits about you at all times. Those cows are awful possessive about their young. One wrong move, and you can find yourself cornered by a 1,200 pound side of beef. Before you know it. She'd be mooing you to death, or even worse, burying you in cow pies. There's a war on. We had to take what hands we could get. You know, when I'm with Tommy, I feel like I'm walking in the shadow of a cowboy giant. No, kid, you don't have to go that far. In fact, I doubt he's told you because he's so modest. But he's just about the finest bronc buster around. Maybe you'd like to see me pitch some hay instead. Are you kidding? I want to see you tame that wild beast. <laughs> I forgot. We have to fix those harnesses or Pan's got a tanner hide. Jeepers. And I just read all about Bronco busting, too, and the man wore black. I heard that one, too. You're just like the hero, Jake Steed. Only cuter. Do you spend all your free time reading cowboy stories? Only since I met Tommy. Well, maybe there's time after all. This moose is female. Look at the tracks keep changing direction. What does that prove? Just like a woman, can't make up her mind. And look out when she does. Never had any trouble with Esther that way. Oh, that Esther, she's one of a kind, all right. That she is. Don't think I've met a gal with a sweeter nature. But if she's anything like her sister Rita, she'd rule her own roost with an iron fist. I ever tell you about No Thumbs McCoy? No, not now, Pam, please. Found a wolf pup whose ma had been shot. Brought it home and cared for it like a household pet. Yeah, had some good times then, too. Until one day, they was playing catch. And that wolf took a chomp out of his hands. No Thumbs, who until that point had been known as All Thumbs, had to put a bullet right between that wolf's eyes. Would there be a moral to this story, Pan? There would. Not all animals is meant to be domesticated. <laughs> Buckaroo, then I'm Rita Hayworth. Tommy ain't no cowboy. He's a cook. And that's all he is. And that's all he is. 
true. They never really listen. They pretend. Well, I say, Rich, as long as you're going into the cabin, would you mind bringing me out some twine? They'll say, sure thing. Thirty seconds later, out he'll come. Without the twine. Uh -huh. In one ear, out the other. And no matter how many times you ask them, they never, ever... Clean up the moose guts. Put down the toilet seat. Toilet seat? Robert never cleans up moose guts either. We're gaining on it. I can feel it. Probably headed for the bog. Well, while you two tenderfeet take a rest, I'll cut for sign. Well, guess we won't be seeing much of you after today, huh? All right. Reckon I'll pass by this neck of the woods once in a while. Oh, no. Not a good idea. Esther's likely to come at you with a shotgun. Let's come by your place. Hmm. No, you know those women, they tend to stick together. You saying Gloria might come after me with a shotgun? I'm just saying, I can't be held responsible. Of course, you could come by after a couple of years or so. Once Esther's settled down with another fella, and you're just a vague memory. What kind of life can I offer her? I don't know, Rob. Esther's willing to take you risks and all. You should consider yourself one lucky son of a gun. I picked up a trail. Let's get a move on. A uh, bog's that away. I'm going back. You couldn't let him talk himself into it after we bagged the moose? And when you do something for them, what thanks do you get? Nelson used to pick me wildflowers. Robert brought me flowers last week. Men. Lug nuts. of the devils. Water tower's half full. No thanks to you. Robert's back. No thanks to you. Look. He's talking to her. He's taking her hand. He's proposing. She looks serious. She's pulling her hand away. Oh, she's shaking her head. And walking away. She turned him down. Really? Who could blame her? What'd you do this time? I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. First, you send McDaniels running. And when I manage to bring him back, Esther wants nothing to do with him. So every failed relationship's my fault. Romeo and Juliet, blame Gloria. Oedipus, it must be Gloria. Of course not. All we talked about is what it's like to be married. You didn't. We did. Rich, you'll never go through with it now. <sighs> oh, so that's your lofty opinion about marriage. Right now, yes. Ditto. And this thing? I hate this thing. You hate it because it's my idea. That's not true. Just because I'm finally starting to take up the slack out here. Who asked you to? Going around making changes to my house behind my back. Your house? Funny, I thought this was our house. It's my house first. I thought you wanted me to be a part of your dream. I thought you wanted me to be your partner. I already have a partner. I want a wife. 
I thought a wife was a partner. But enough about you two lovebirds. It's Esther who's fixing to leave this time. I'll go talk to her. No, you won't. I'll talk to McDaniels. Don't, Don't even, even think, think about, about it! it. I deserve it. Tommy. I'm sorry, Sally. I, uh, I never should have lied to you like that. It's just that I think you're so swell. Well, would you hush up a minute? And I knew a girl like you could never like a guy like me, so... What I... you did for me today was the sweetest thing a fella has ever done. So I got all crazy, and... Pardon me? I think you're the bee's knees. Packing up. Work's done. Robert's crazy about you, you know. That's a funny way of showing it. Well, he came back, didn't he? This time. You think he'll take off again? can't trust men. Well, you see, now, that's that's not exactly true. Sometimes a man will feel a certain way. But he, he doesn't say so, he, he, because he doesn't understand exactly how it is he's feeling. That's supposed to make me feel better? Look, Robert came back. He realized what he did was wrong. So he's actually a highly evolved male, if you believe Darwin. The William Lake Darwins or the Tatler Darwins? Forget it. Why do you want us to get married so bad when you and Gloria are so miserable? Well, we're not miserable. All the time. <laughs> Besides, this has got nothing to do with Gloria and me. Maybe you're scared to get married. No. Maybe you're scared that he'll start to have just as much say as you do. And that eats at you. So you liked it better when he was more like a guest. And you made all the decisions for both of you. I don't make the decisions. Rita does. Maybe you're worried that he's going to get too independent and that he just won't need you in the same way anymore. Am I right? Not even close. I owe you an apology, Robert. What for? You didn't turn me down? No. But I told Esther how I was feeling about Rich. I take it these weren't good feelings. Not exactly. Robert, you have to give Esther another chance. So she can turn me down twice? You rode off without so much as a word to her. I left her a note. Notes don't count. You made a big decision that affected both of you without even talking to her about it first. You pretended all along that you were doing it for her. But in your heart, you knew that you were doing it for you. No, I was doing it for her. And you got so wrapped up in it all that you didn't even have any time left for him. Her. The point is, she needs to know that you won't give her up just because she tells you to. And what am I supposed to do? Well, if you love someone, you have to try to understand how she's feeling. Even when he clearly doesn't seem to know himself. You see what I'm saying? Hi. Look. Look. I'm sorry about what I said. I just thought you had the right to know. It's 
okay. I'm the one who should apologize. After all, I took your boyfriend. Tommy's not my boyfriend. He's a palooka, a lemux. Oh, Kit. I'm the last person you need to lie to. I didn't mean to take him. When I met him, I didn't even know you were sweet on him. And I understand how you must feel. I mean, Tommy's just the cat's meow. But the truth is, I'm jealous of you. Of me? You get to live with him day in, day out. Talk about a dream come true. Kid, I'm glad we've had this talk. Friends? Sure. Do that. <laughs> Sick. I seem confused. Oh, jeez. Not again. I can't look. He's taking her hand. He's talking to her in earnest. He's dropping down to one knee. He's getting up again. She's throwing her arms around him. They're kissing. What? I knew it would work out. I'm an optimist. That's what I love about you. The strange thing happened when I was talking to Esther. You know, the strangest thing happened when I was talking to Daniels. You are an equal partner, Gloria. Yes, and as such, and as such I should always you should discuss be able things to with make you your own first. decisions. water tower is mistake. terrific what do you say we just stop talking I had a dog once stupidest mutt you ever saw couldn't stand the flea bitten mongrel, but it followed me everywhere. Until one day, this other cowboy came into camp, and darned if that dog didn't take to him. Before I knew it, he was all over this other fellow, and I was yesterday's hash. I hated that dog, but it still stuck in my craw when he switched his affections. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I believe I do. Evening. Where is everyone? I don't rightly know. But I'll wager there's some folks gonna need Marion in the morning. And where's Sally? Saw her heading in the direction of the barn, sir. With Tommy. One good reason? 